Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to uh, our program, The Inner Voice. You are tuned to 1422 Medium Wave. This is uh, the new Panhellenic Voice. I'm Dr. Gabriel Ladies. I'll be with you till 1 o'clock. Today, I'm going to be discussing uh, the law of least effort. The law of least effort. You'll not want to miss it, my friends. Fascinating program about uh, our emotional well-being and how to cope uh, with life in an enhanced manner, how to take charge instead of um, letting life happen to us. So stay tuned while I greet my fellow Greek listeners and I'll be back with you in just a sec. Kalispera sas philes ke phili, kyrias ke kyri. Isaste sindonis menis ta dekatestre kosidio mesea kimata tis neas panelinas fonis με την εκπομπή μας σε εσωτερική φωνή. Μαζί σας ο Dr. Παναγιώτης Γαβριλίδης μέχρι τις μία η ώρα. Μείνετε συντονισμένοι μαζί μας και εύχομαι να αναπαύσουμε λίγο, να χαμογελάσουμε λίγο σήμερα, να περάσουμε την ώρα ωραία. All right, my friends, the law of least effort. Kind of uh, mystical title, paradoxical title. Uh, the law of least effort and how we can... Uh, apply it practically in our lives and how we actually desperately need to apply it. All right. This law, my friends, is based on the fact that nature's intelligence functions with effortless ease and a kind of abandoned carefreeness. Now, when I was very little, uh, my dad... Uh, attempted many times successfully to teach me this uh, lesson my child he would say to me don't force things because if you do they may break then what <laughs> all right <laughs> he would say this to me over and over and over again don't force things my son don't force things you don't want them to break so to illustrate he would uh, take a spanner and uh, tighten a nut so hard that the nut would strip and of course uh, be rendered uh, useless thereafter. Now later in life as I matured and as I went through my odyssey of uh, finding myself, I observed this principle in nature uh, as well with uh, trees, pine trees for example. Uh, I observed that uh, pine trees are rigid as we all know and in a storm they can snap willow trees on the other hand are very pliable and they will bend and twist with the storm but when the storm is gone they're still there they're still here it is a little battered here and there i'm sure but still fully functioning and able to continue their labor of love towards man and beast and the environment, you see. Whereas pine trees, as I've seen with my own eyes, uh, in a hurricane, will just snap in two and three. Frightening thing to see. I've actually seen a hurricane take a 100-foot uh, tall pine tree and snap it in two places. Crack, crack. End of the pine tree, you see. Whereas the... Um, pliable trees like uh, the willow tree uh, surrounding uh, in the surrounding areas survived the hurricane they survived and they're still uh, fully uh, functioning after the storm now we as people as human beings also come uh, in all kinds of forms particularly in rigid or pliable forms or uh, everything in the middle Rigid people are unbending in their views, for example. There is only one way to do things, their way. <laughs> and every other way is wrong, all right? <laughs> you don't do things my way, hit the road, Jack. <laughs> I, don't want to, I don't want to know you. There's only one correct thing, one correct way to do things, and that is my way. But wise people pliable people on the other hand the more mature the more wise people among us are willing to meet you uh, halfway 
they will take your point of view into consideration and will cooperate with you in order to get the job done. They're willing to bend, they're willing to meet you halfway, they're pliable. Consequently, they are much happier people and have a lot less anguish and stress in their lives. And of course, those they come into contact with and have dealings with are also much happier as a result. Uh, and and, and th this, my friends, is the principle of least action, of least resistance. I'll have a lot more to say about it. But talking about pliable people and uh, people who are willing to cooperate with you uh, re re reminds me of um, the story of the, uh, the hundredth monkey syndrome. Uh, an amazing scientific discovery uh, that they made uh, some uh, decades ago, ago now. They, they observed that uh, there were a group of monkeys off the coast of Japan that um, for years, for, for thousands of years, hundreds of years, as, uh, when, uh, as people observed those monkeys, they um, would break uh, clams in a certain way. They would, they would take the clams, go up high on the rocks and drop them way down off the cliff. And as the clams uh, b f broke apart at the bottom of the cliff, the, the monkeys would run there and eat them. But then one uh, female one day uh, inadvertently grabbed a rock and smashed the clam. Now, well, this was much easier and much quicker than getting the clams, trekking up to the top of the cliff, throwing them off the cliff, let them break at the bottom on the rocks and then climbing down again and, and getting the food that way. This was a lot quicker, more efficient. And the other monkeys around her, of course, started doing the same thing, using rocks to break the clams. Now, pretty soon the whole tribe was doing it. Now, these monkeys were isolated on an island just off the coast of Japan. Now, here is the interesting thing, and I'll tell you how it ties in with what I want to say. That other monkeys of the same uh, genre, the same species, is the word I'm looking for, in other islands hundreds of miles away that had no contact with this particular group of monkeys began doing the same thing. Now, that's amazing. From time immemorial, as we observed these monkeys, they did, they broke the clamps the same way. Climb up the cliff, throw them onto the rocks. Suddenly, though, this one female discovers a new way of breaking the clamps, and suddenly, other groups of monkeys, hundreds of miles away with no contact, no one showing them, began doing the same thing. What is going on here? This is science. And since then, uh, the, the, this has become a big science, uh, the science of morphogenetic fields, which basically means that we are all connected on some level, on the great uh, subconscious level, right? Uh, we're all uh, connected, and animals as well, obviously. And once enough of us begin thinking a certain way, or doing things a certain way, or speaking a certain way, then we reach what scientists call a critical mass point. And once that critical mass point is reached, then the whole group in the uh, species of animal begins doing the same thing, and the same with humans. Now you can begin to understand why one man, a Gandhi, one man, a Socrates, one woman, a teenager at that, a Jean d'Arc, <laughs> Joan of Arc, <laughs> in France, would get an idea. She would be so burning with passion about it, as well as Gandhi, as well as Socrates, that as they imparted their ideas to the next person and the next person and the next person and those people uh, as they did that 
enough people began to think the same way as this one individual did, like the hundredth monkey syndrome, that, f that wow, we find a whole nation, India, liberating themselves from the British Empire. We find a teenager, Jeanne d'Arc, taking the whole nation with her to war in a day when women meant nothing and men ruled the roost. Okay? Amazing, you see? This is what scientists call the critical mass point. So, likewise, you and I, if we think good thoughts, loving thoughts, helpful thoughts, cooperative thoughts, thoughts of effortless ease as opposed to, Ooh, I've got to stress, I've got to stri I've got to struggle to pay the rent, I've got to struggle to do this, I've got to struggle to educate my children, I've got to struggle to stay in my relationship, I've got to work hard at it. <laughs> you see, instead of doing that, instead of believing that lie, instead of believing in the law of least effort, we can go on and change the lives of many of thousands of people and hopefully the whole planet just like Gandhi did, just like Jean d'Arc did, just like Socrates did. The teachings of Socrates are still reverberating throughout the planet thousands of years after his death. You see my point? You see? This is the principle of least action of least resistance and therefore it is also the principle of harmony and love harmony and love love of fellow man love of yourself love of the good things the right way love of justice love of fairness love of health why? You see, resistance, unreasonable resistance, my friends, causes everything from impersonal strife, uh, from interpersonal strife, to world wars, doesn't it? Now, I'm not talking about someone coming at you with a knife to hurt you or kill you, my friends. Then, you obviously need to defend yourself as best you can and as efficiently as you can and as forcefully as you can. We're talking here about ordinary life. What color shall we paint the house? Where shall we put the sofa? Shall we do this project at work, the project at work this way or that way? Both ways will get the job done. Therefore, it's silly to go to war about doing it only your way or my way. You see what I mean, I'm sure. When we learn this lesson, my friends, we easily fulfill our desires because we go through life, through our relationships, with a lot less friction, a lot less resistance. And hence, things move a lot more salubriously. Like the wheel, the squeaky wheel that you oil, it moves a lot more salubriously, a lo it, it, it's now oiled, that's what that word means, more smoothly, we move through life more smoothly. When we stop to think and stop to meditate on this law of the ages called the law of least effort. Now, I will elaborate a lot more on it as the program unfolds so that we can understand there are three components as well to the law of least effort that I'll get to later. Uh, co the component of acceptance, of responsibility, of defenselessness. A very fascinating component, I find. Particularly acceptance and defenselessness. They, they, they speak to me. Now, if you observe nature at work, you will see that least effort not no effort, <laughs> but least effort is expended. Do you see the difference? I'm not saying we need no effort. No, of course not. <laughs> it's taking me effort right now to do this program. It's taking, you it's taking you effort to listen to me. I am talking about least effort without stress. Not no effort. As opposed to stressful effort, you see? When you observe nature at work, you'll see that 
she expends least effort least effort grass for example the grass doesn't stress to grow ah, gotta grow stress push struggle no <laughs> the grass just grows the fish don't stress to swim they just swim flowers don't stress to bloom they just bloom birds don't stress to fly they just fly this is their intrinsic nature their inherent innate nature the earth doesn't try to spin on its own axis it is the nature of the earth the nature of the earth to spin with dizzying speed around its axis and to hurtle through space that's what the earth does it is the nature of babies to be in bliss it is the nature of the sun to shine the sun doesn't have to struggle to shine it is the nature of the stars to glitter and sparkle and twinkle and it is human nature it should be I should say it should be human nature to make our dreams manifest in other words to manifest our goals in physical form easily and without excessive and deleterious or harmful stress you see effort by itself is necessary and right when proceeding towards your goals but effort laced with negative emotion ah that now becomes negative stress that now becomes negative effort because it's laced with emotion mm, I'm working so hard I wonder whether I will accomplish what I want to accomplish ah you see I mean if you want to build a house um, you have to put out effort and put the bricks together and sooner or later the house will be built you have to have a plan etc you have to know what you're doing and you'll be happy when the house is built but if while putting the bricks together you start stressing and you start fretting well what if the bricks are no good <laughs> what if the electrician is a scoundrel and cheats me <laughs> what if the plumber and, and and so on and so on and so on and you obsess about everything well now you see you're lacing your good and wonderful effort of building the house and your talent as a builder with negative emotion you see well, well what if what if this bad thing happens what if that bad thing yeah, yeah. and sure as God made little apples your stress level will rise to the point where instead of enjoying the fruits of your labor you become one unappetizing ball of distress <laughs> isn't it and we've all experienced that haven't we and what's more once you get to that point it doesn't end with you like the 100 uh, monkey 100th monkey syndrome oh that works negatively as well by the way my friends I gave you a positive example but that works negatively as well here is now you're a ball of stress and distress and now you begin infecting everyone around you and they become miserable as well and on and on it goes spreading like a virus so who's going to be the wise one to stop it to say hey what am I doing why am I struggling why don't I stop fretting and gnashing my teeth in anguish <laughs> and take a step back and look at the situation with a fresh eye like a child would in wonder and maybe see a different far less stressful solution a more salubrious smoother solution in the age-old philosophy of India my friends this principle is known as the principle of economy of effort you see the principle of economy of effort the law of least effort just another way of saying the same thing do less and accomplish more by being clear-headed calm -er, okay <laughs> ultimately you come to the state 
where you never stress anymore and yet accomplish everything you want without stress. This is the ideal perfection. But who says we can't strive for perfection? Who says we can't be perfect one day? Right? Now this will mean that perfection, if you were to reach perfection, this means that there's just a faint idea and then the manifestation of the idea comes about easily with good humor as well. Oh, what a dull world this world is becoming because there is less and less humor. Have you noticed that people just don't tell jokes anymore? Far life has become far too serious. It used to be, I remember, even when I was a teenager, everyone would have a joke to tell a humorous story. No, no, nothing. There's one disaster after the other. See, we want to strive for the level of miracles. What is commonly called a miracle is actually just an expression of the law of least effort. Every time a blade of grass grows, that's a miracle. Every time you sink your teeth into a juicy apple, that's a miracle. Nature's intelligence, likewise, functions effortlessly. You see, frictionlessly. To coin a word. Frictionlessly. Spontaneously. Salubriously. <laughs> It is non-linear, it is intuitive, it is holistic, and it is nourishing, and it hurts no one, only does good to everybody. And when you are thus in harmony with nature, when you are established in the knowledge of your true and authentic self, with a capital S, then you can make use of the law of least effort all the time. You can. Least effort is expended when your actions are motivated by love. Because nature is held together by the energy of love. No doubt about it. Consider kindness. What is that but an energy of love? Kindness expressed unconditionally. When you seek power and control of other people, you waste energy. big amounts of energy. You distress yourself, you distress everyone around you, because you have be now become a control freak. That's how you get your kicks, seeking power and control over other people. Now, if you're a natural leader, you, don't have, you, you won't have to do that, you see, and you won't. A natural leader is one who has passion, who has a goal, and who has a plan to achieve that goal. You'll find then that most people will follow such a natural leader, because they don't have a plan, they don't have a goal. They're not leaders, you see. So they naturally look around and say, well, what am I going to do today? There's nothing to do. Well, that person seems to know what they're doing. They're going somewhere. Why don't I join? <laughs> you see? And that's how new movements are born, new groups, etc., etc. When you seek money or power for the sake of the ego, the insidious ego, you spend energy chasing the illusion of happiness instead of enjoying happiness in the moment. When you seek money for personal gain only, you cut off the flow of energy to yourself, you see, and you interfere with the expression of, uh, the expression of nature's intelligence towards you. But when your actions are motivated by authentic love, there is no waste of energy, none. When your actions are motivated by love, your energy multiplies and accumulates. And the surplus energy you gather and enjoy can be channeled to create anything you want. I mean, within reason, okay? You can't create another universe. The universe has already been created. <laughs> That's not, we're not talking ridiculous things here, okay? 
but you can create the things that you need and want for you and your children you can create health you can create abundance you can create peace you can create laughter and joy you can think of your physical body as a device for controlling energy because that's what it actually is scientifically our physical bodies are devices for controlling energy no doubt about it they can generate store and expand energy that's what the, our bodies do so if we learn how to generate store and expand energy in an efficient stress free way effortless way then we can create any degree of abundance of love of joy of peace attention to the ego however consumes the greatest amount of energy when your internal reference point is the ego me 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 when you seek power and control over other people or seek approval from others another great danger do you approve of me will you love me if I do that will you love me if I do this you spend energy in a wasteful way will you love me if I wash your socks for 10 years <laughs> Will you love me if I cook for you for 10 years? Will you love me if I stop? <laughs> you see? <laughs> ego, ego, ego. <laughs> People go around, they, they, they should say, I trade you. <laughs> they should not say, I love you, honey. They should say, I trade you. Because they're trading something for something else, you see. They're trading maybe security, a home. <laughs> and, and in return, the honey is trading... Uh, her affections <laughs> to the man you see do people really understand what true authentic love is it's not conditional to whether you wash my socks for the next 10 years or make my dinner for the next 10 years or whether you smile every time you see me for the next 10 years no that's a trade-off that's a trade that's not unconditional love you see when our energy is freed up when it doesn't have to pander to the ego anymore and to being a control freak, it can then be rechanneled and used to create anything that we want. When our internal reference point is our spirit, our authenticity, the God force within us, when we are immune to criticism and unfearful of any challenge, then, and only then, we can harness the power of love which holds the universe together, which runs the universe, which expands the universe never-endingly, and use that energy creatively for the experience of abundance and growth. In the book entitled The Art of Dreaming by Carlos Castaneda, or as my beloved would say, my beloved Madalena, Carlos Castaneda, <laughs> is Portuguese speaking <laughs> as you can say these things much better than us uh, Greek <laughs> speaking uh, people scan alright so in that book by Carlos Castaneda the character the protagonist Don Juan says the book's called The Art of Dreaming for those who are interested and I quote most of our energy goes into upholding our importance if we were capable of losing some of that importance Two extraordinary things would happen to us. One, we would free our energy from trying to maintain the illusory idea of our personal grandeur. Wow. Yes, indeed. We would, the first thing that would happen, if we were capable of losing some of that egotistical importance, you see, that we so all strive towards, is we would free our energy from trying to maintain the illusion of our grandeur. And two, the second thing that would happen is that we would provide ourselves with enough energy to catch a glimpse of the actual grandeur of the universe. Now there is grandeur. <laughs> there is grandeur <laughs> to wow at. <laughs> to say wow. To look at and say wow there is actual grandeur there's nothing grandiose about 
your little ego or mine <laughs> I hasten to add very much hasten we're all in the same boat my friends we're all homo sapiens sapiens human beings my friends stay with me we will now go to a quick commercial break and we'll come back with our topic the law of least effort and examine the three components of the law of least effort acceptance responsibility and defenselessness we are halfway stay with us here on 20, uh, 1422 medium wave of the new panhellenic voice and we'll be right back with the inner voice this is dr gabriel Lidis. Uh, i'll give you my telephone number in a minute and again at the end i do consult as a natural medicine practitioner those of you who do wish uh, to chat to me for any reason whatsoever inquire about the nutrients or uh, the modality of therapy that i use my number is 0761896690 i repeat 0761896690 stay with us la pamentora filis ke fili kiries ke kiri sto sinithis menomas diafmistiko dialima ke tha imaste pali mazi se liga lepta e dosa de kadesre kosidio mese ke menatis nea spanelinias fonis Να συνεχίσουμε το πρόγραμμά μα εσωτερική φωνή. Ο Δόκτωρ Πανεγιώτη Γαβριλίδη μαζί σα μέχρι τι μία η ώρα. Το τηλέφωνο μου τώρα θα σα δώσω για όποιον θέλει να με συμβολευθεί για διάφορε θεραπείε με natural medicine. Και θα ξαναδώσω το νούμερο μου πάλι στο τέλο τη εκπομπή. Μολύβι και χαρτί, γρήγορα, γρήγορα, γρήγορα. Για όποιον ενδιαφέρεται, μπορείτε να επικοινωνήσετε μαζί μου στο νούμερο 076-189-6690. Επαναλαμβάνω. 076 0-7-6-1-8-9-6-6-9-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-
we accept things as they are, not as we wish they were in this moment. You see, this principle of acceptance, and, and why do this? See, this principle is most powerful, and it is most important that we understand why it is so important and why this principle of acceptance of the current moment is so powerful and so important. Okay, this is why. We can wish for things in the future to be different. No problem against that. No one is saying that you should not do that. Of course you can wish for things to be different in the future. But in this moment, in order for things to be different in the future, by least effort and least struggle, in this moment, you have to accept things as they are now. What do I mean? Let's clarify further. What do I mean? See, when you feel frustrated or upset um, by a person or a situation, remember that you're not reacting to the person or the situation. No! Did you know that? Someone calls and someone comes and calls you, hey, dummy, what are you doing now? <laughs> if you were to get upset and say, who are you calling a dummy? <laughs> I dare you. No, you see, you're not reacting to that person or the fact that the person called you a dummy. No. You are reacting to your feelings about the person and about the person's words, not to the person or the words. You see, if you were the Buddha and someone came and called you, you hey, dummy, what are you doing today? You would not answer. I've told this story before how this person went around insulting the Buddha for three days. and the end of three days, I said, well, what? how come you didn't take offense at any of my insults? And the Buddha said, my friend, for the last three days you've been offering me gifts. Now at what point does a gift become mine or yours? The person said, well, when I accept the gift, and the Buddha said, well, for the last three days, I did not accept any of your gifts. <laughs> oh, dear, 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 okay? Someone calls you a dummy. That's a gift they're offering to you that you certainly do not have to accept. It's only when you accept it, and then you start reacting to your feelings, and it's only then that you get upset, you see? But you know you're not a dummy, so, you know. How they traffic, someone shows you the finger. Someone lays on the horn and yells at you. It's a gift they're offering you. It only becomes yours when you accept it. <laughs> okay. So we react to our feelings about the person or about the situation. These are your feelings. And your feelings alone. And are not someone else's fault. They're your feelings. When you recognize, you see, and understand this completely, you're then ready to take responsibility for how you feel and to change it. And if you can accept things as they are, then you're ready to take responsibility for your situation and for all the events that you see as problems, but are really just gifts that you accept or not. And this leads us to the second component of the law of least effort, responsibility. What does responsibility mean? What do I mean by that? See, responsibility means not blaming anyone or anything for your situation, including yourself. Please, don't go around blaming anybody, including yourself. Don't blame yourself. Having accepted the circumstance, this event this problem, responsibility then means the ability to have a creative response to the situation as it is now. All problems contain within them the seeds of opportunity to change that problem, and this awareness allows you to take the moment and transform it to a better situation or thing. See how powerful these principles are? Principle of acceptance, the principle of responsibility. Once you do this, every so-called upsetting situation will become an opportunity for the creation of something new and beautiful and harmonious and loving. And every so-called tormentor or tyrant in your life will just become a teacher offering you gifts, which you can accept or not. You see, reality is actually an interpretation 
your personal interpretation. And if you choose to interpret reality in this way, you will have many teachers around you, I promise you, <laughs> and many opportunities to evolve. <laughs> so, whenever confronted by a tyrant, a tormentor, a teacher, a friend, or an enemy, they all mean the same thing. You heard right. Your beloved, your soulmate, your tyrant, your tormentor, your teacher, your friend, your enemy, they all mean the same thing. Remind yourself, this moment is as it should be. This moment is as it should be. I can change it in the future, but this moment now is as it should be. So I will accept it, I will take responsibility for it, and then plan to change it in the future. Whatever relationships you have attracted in your life at this moment are precisely the ones you need in your life at this moment. There is a hidden meaning behind all events, and this hidden meaning is serving your own evolution. Alright, my friends, the third component of the law of least effort is, least effort is defenselessness, which means that your awareness is established in defenselessness, which means you have relinquished the need to convince or persuade others of your point of view. You don't need to defend yourself or explain yourself. Give it up. It's a waste of energy. The energy you save defending yourself and explaining yourself, you can use to create the harmonious, loving world, abundant world, healthy world that you want to create. It matters not, my friends, that Harry or Sally don't live their lives your way or that, they, or that they don't want you to live your life your way. It matters not. You have to live your life in such a way that it brings you love and joy and peace and happiness. Not Harry's or Sally's way. No way. Alright? It has to bring you love, joy and peace. Your way. If you observe people around you, you'll see that they spend 99% of their time defending their points of view, explaining themselves endlessly, ad nauseam, and boring us all to death. But if we just relinquish this need to defend our, defend our point of view, we will in that relinquishment gain access to enormous amounts of energy that have been previously wasted. When we become defensive, you see, and blame others and blame ourselves and do not accept and surrender to the moment, our life meets resistance. Resistance. Anytime you encounter resistance, recognize that if you force the situation, the resistance will only increase. You don't want to stand rigid like a tall oak tree or pine tree that craps that cracks and collapses in the storm my friends oh no. instead you want to be flexible like a reed or a willow tree that will bend with the storm and survive and bloom and thrive so the thing to do is to completely desist from defending your point of view keep it to yourself you know who you are when you have no point to defend, you do not allow the birth of an argument. If you do this consistently, if you stop fighting and resisting, you will fully experience the present. If you embrace the present and become one with it and merge with it, my friends, you will experience a fire, a glow, a sparkle of ecstasy throbbing in every living sentient being. And as you begin to experience this exaltation of spirit in the oneness of everything that is alive, as you become intimate with it, joy will be born within you and you will drop the terrible burdens and encumbrances of defensiveness, resentment and hurtfulness. Only then will we become light-hearted, carefree, joyous and free. I don't know about you, my friends, but this is the kind of experience I want from my life and for my children and for my friends and for the world. In this joyful, simple freedom, you will know without any doubt in your heart that what you want is available to you whenever you want it.
because your want will be born from the level of happiness, not from the level of anxiety or fear. Nothing good comes from that level. You do not need to justify. Simply declare your intent to yourself, and you will experience fulfillment, delight, joy, freedom, and autonomy, self-rule in every moment of your life. All right, my friends, I invite us to make a commitment to follow this path of least resistance. This is the path through which nature's intelligence unfolds spontaneously, without friction or effort. When you have the exquisite combination of acceptance of the present moment, responsibility for what you have created, brought about, and defenselessness, you will experience life flowing with effortless ease. When you remain open to all points of view, are considerate of others, not rigidly attached to only one point of view, your dreams, your desires, your goals will flow with nature's desires in harmony. Then you can release your intentions without attachment, without obsessiveness, and just wait for the appropriate season for your desires to blossom into reality. You can be sure that when the season is right, my friends, your desires will manifest. This is the law of least effort. I want to leave you, my friends, with my favorite nursery rhyme. Row, row, row your boat, not anybody else's. Gently, not with struggle. Down the stream, not up the stream. Merrily, merrily, merrily. For life is but a dream. Your dream and my dream, my friends. Sweet dreams. Okay, my friends. <laughs> I invite you to tune in again next uh, Monday at high noon, 12 o'clock, right here on 14 with 22 medium wave of the new Panhellenic Voice. Remember that I do consult as a natural medicine practitioner. Those of you who do wish to consult me, pen and paper, quick, quick, quick. My number is 076-189-6690. I repeat, 076-189-6690. Series of this program and past programs are available from me. Contact me if you're interested. Also, if you have a group that you would like me to give a talk to, let me know. I'll be happy to do that, and I do those talks for free. Till next time, take care, have a good week, keep smiling. From me, Dr. Gabriel, it is a bit the adieu. And don't forget my program tomorrow night on Holistic Health, right here on the new Panhellenic Voice, 1422 Medium Wave AM, from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. tomorrow night. Take care, my friends. Lipon, Phyllis, Kefili, Kiries, Kekiri, Phthasame, Sotelos, Tisek, Pombismas, Kegas, Simera, Thaime, Pali, Mazisas, Tinepamni, Deftera, but this is the other time I'm going to be here. Το απόγευμα, δώστε τα κατάστρα κοστίδια μέσα σε κήμερα της νέας πανελλήνιας φωνής. Όσοι από εσάς θέλετε να με συμβουλευτείτε για διάφορες θεραπείες με natural medicine, μπορείτε να επικοινωνήσετε μαζί μου στο τηλέφωνο 076-189-6690. Επαναλαμβάνω. 076-189-6690. Επίσης μπορώ να σας προμηθεύσω CDs αυτού του προγράμματος και όλων των προηγουμένων προγραμματών μου. Όπως επίσης δίνω διαλέξεις στην Αγγλική, εάν έχετε ένα group που ενδιαφέρεται για μια τέτοια διάλεξη σε Holistic Health, μη διστάστε να επικοινωνήσετε μαζί μου, οι διαλέξεις μου είναι εντελώς δωρεάν. Αυτά λοιπόν αγαπητοί μου ακροατές, από μένα τον Δόκτωρο Παναγιώτη Γαβριλίδη, καλό σας απόγευμα, καλή σας μέρα, καλή εβδομάδα. Και μην ξεχάστε να με ακούσετε αύριο βράδυ από τις 7 μέχρι τις 8 περί την υγεία μας. Αντίο σας.